Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. I'm a compost evangelist. Um, I get to go around the world because the an organization called Farmer to Farmer sends me to help people all the world, been in 12 different countries now, um, teaching them how to improve their soils. Because what we want to do is, is make them more profitable and actually grow more crops. That's what I, what, that's what I do. Um, but you have some roadblock stuff that's in our, in our way. I'll talk about that. But first, here's one of my assignments. That's a before and after picture. So this is Mozambique, and that was uh, 2012. And nine months later, that's the change in the soil, because we're talking about how to improve agriculture around the world. And the good friend of mine standing there next to me, his name is Rufu. And Rufu is, uh, uh, became a garden teacher now. He teaches all over Africa. In fact, he did it so well that he has a group of uh, teachers that he's had to respond to because the demand went up. And so they're going all over his area of Mozambique, Africa, um, teaching the methods you're going to learn uh, from me in this, in this talk. Um, there's some stuff in our way, though. These are mountains. There are challenges to our all lives. One of them is, you see, you probably all know this, but the cost of food is going up. And just see it, see it, and every, everything else in living is going up. Um, num number two is we have an increasing amount of health problems, you know, with type 2 diabetes and dementia and heart attacks and, and uh, cancer. Those are all life-threatening things that have increased in our, in our culture. Soils have something to do with that and help resolve those kinds of issues. And then there's the climate change, the life-threatening events that, that happen to us. You see them on the news and everything else. And uh, we had an incident with a big flood here a year ago, and, and uh, it tore up some towns and stuff too. But <clears throat> I'm here to tell you that if you can change the soils and get them healthy, it affects all of these roadblocks. So I'm going to talk a little bit about floods and stuff too. Look at this situation here. This is in Tanzania, Africa, and I'm standing on what was farmland. It's been mismanaged and overplowed, overfarmed, and it's near Mount Kilimanjaro. It's on a slope, and the water has moved across there and removed the topsoil. And the reason I can say that, right in front of where I'm standing in this photo is a fence. And this is what it looks like on the other side of the fence. It's just this beautiful savanna grassland you get a huge rainstorm, this doesn't move. And that brings up the, one of the key ingredients that I've been able to adapt and help people with. You don't have to dig in the soil anymore. Leave the native soils alone and add a material on top of it. And then um, you have everything in place because in the native soil there's a biological system with, with microbes that move things around, the fungi move things around, and the amoebas and stuff and everything in there, it's, it's a zoo of animals inside of living soil. Don't disturb that. Go up above it. Here's an example. Is if I was in Africa right now, they would look at that ground and they would call that man-made desert naked soils. I don't want to see anybody leaving their soils bare like that. The sun shines on it, dries it out, it's thirsty, it's sick, and it's nearly dead. So on the other side of this is um, organic material. If you can take that organic material and put it on top of this, what Africans would consider naked ground, you, uh, you can improve it because the rain would come and the microbiology that's in the good soils will start to change that soil. There's the key of the whole system that we're coming up with. This is compost, folks. It's, di 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 it's digestive organic matter. Inside my little pinch of finger here is, is probably one million microbes, a million of them or more. I don't know whoever counted them, but uh, <laughs> it took them a little while to figure that out. But 
and about 800 different species of things is in this soil. That's what we want to be farming with because they can pick the nutrients up in the soil from one area of the plants and move it over to the root system of another area and feed it. It's a symbiotic relationship where the roots exchange sugar for the materials they need. So this is incidentally. People come up and say, I don't have a green thumb. I can't grow things. You make this soil, and by the way, you can make it for free. That's the green thumb. And when it gets really, really good, here it is in uh, a glass jar. I, I built this glass jar and set it up um, so that uh, I could teach from it. I wanted to show people the different materials in a glass jar. Um, there's dry grass and green grass and a little bit of soil and some clean livestock manure and some wood ash and some kitchen waste, all chopped up in this jar. So I went to find the jar, the same jar as next to it there. In 12 days, it turned by itself in a glass jar. It shouldn't have done that. It, it, you, know, it, you won't find any books that tell you to grow compost in a glass jar. But that means you can make it small, you can make it in a bucket, you can make it in a box, you can make it in a sack, and you can even make it in a, in a whole garden, garden bed here. This is a no-dig garden that's in our backyard where we live. The cardboard on top of that grass has blocked the sunlight, so that is a, like an organic weed killer. So it's an easy way to make gardening and growing your healthy food so simple that anybody can do this. So here I am making the, killing the grass, but then in a, I chopped up all the vegetation for that formula I just showed you in the glass jar and chopped it up and put it in a, between the blocks there, let it go through the winter, and she turned to this beautiful black soil, about eight inches of deep. And then you can see the, what is the beginning of a food jungle over there. But here, here's these big tomatoes. I wish you could all taste this thing. <laughs> this is apricot brandy wine. It's very rare. I love it. I have to make a, uh, keep my seeds safe so I keep them from hailstorms or something too. Um, if I handed this to a chef and had him taste it, he would say, oh my goodness, where did you get this thing? They just, it just melts in your mouth and it's, it, it's sweet. Incidentally, tomatoes fight cancer. That'll get people to think about their, their diet a little more. Here's a production picture. That was taken on September 1st of this year. <laughs> And I thought, well, that's a lot of food out of, a, out of a small backyard garden. So my wife comes home and six days later. And she said, Wayne, you missed this. <laughs> See, it's a jungle of food. You have to go in there and dig around like this to even find that stuff. So what I'm saying is there's eight inches of compost in there made for free. That means it's so simple. You don't even have to dig or anything else and grow this huge, abundant amount of food. I did an experiment on myself. You want to change your mood, change your food, like this thing says. So I decided this microbiology thing I keep studying, I'm going to change the microbiology in my body, especially my digestive tract. There's a lot of thousands, millions, actually trillions of, of organisms inside every one of you and me. And so I'm going to change my microbiome in my digestive tract. Um, I'm a veteran. They told me I was... Uh, getting close to being pre-diabetic with my uh, blood test. And I thought, oh no, I'm 81 years old. I don't want to mess around with that. I got more things to do than, than get sick or something like that and have to deal with diabetes. So that's, I dropped sugar. About three weeks ago, I dropped sugar and immediately 10 pounds dis disappeared in me in a, um, a week and a half. And I was like, whoa. But other things started happening. I popped out of bed one morning, <laughs> and I got dizzy. And I said, I guess I better go take a blood pressure. So I have a cup, you know, and I took my own blood pressure. It was extremely low. I dropped some of my heart medicine, my, my uh, beta blocker and that kind of stuff off of my thing. So I don't have to take, take that anymore. But th my energy came up. But guess what? My brain started working different. I could remember where I lay things down in the house. 
like I misplaced my phone and I'm running around looking for. Well, now I can say, okay, the last time I was, I was oh, there it is. And, and I'm telling you, change your food and it can change your health. And doing it by eating food that comes directly out of the compost, like, like this stuff that's growing in this little basket. And just for example, to show you how easy it is to grow this kind of healthy food, the, the bottom part of this is, is uh, um, there's no nutrients in it. There's no carbon in this soil. And so I've just put a piece of cardboard on there for demonstration purposes and added an inch and a half of compost. I wasn't even going to use this model, but the plants started growing. And I thought, oh my goodness, in that much compost. But guess what, folks? You don't even have to have this outside you know, to grow through the winter. Here in, where we live in cold Montana, you can make these kinds of things and eat right, healthy food during when it's so cold out. I think the modern kitchens are going to have these kind of things built into the wall with a drip system, and you'll have food in the kitchen. So that's kind of where we're, where we're heading in, in some of this uh, uh, business. But I want to show you that it actually works on a bigger scale. This is a, a ranch that's near here. The rancher's name is Don Charles. And we took two of his big pastures that he had, uh, they were thousands of acres, and divided them into 36 subunits. And they called them paddocks now. So he rotates through these things, but I want to show you the difference. The soil changed, everybody. It went from, on his right hand, that's western wheatgrass, and that's where his cattle graze. In his other hand, he come up with this idea. We put a, a loop in the electric fences, that's how we subdivided it. So it has no grazing for 10 years. That poor little sick plant hasn't been stepped on or added any manure or anything. It's suffering from what I now call land idolitis. To understand that, just go lay in a hospital bed for 30 days and see what happens to you. Well, in an environment like this, in a dry environment, that poor plant is still western wheatgrass, dug up the same area that the other one is. So that's on a massive scale, change your soils to change your ranch. He doubled his livestock numbers, and that many uh, come close to doubling his uh, in gross income. I want this word to what I'm telling you about to spread. And here are some other journeys that I'm on. The, the top picture there is from um, Zambia. And there's a 60 some folks in there, and they all made compost. Everybody that comes to the kind of presentations I do, I want them to physically do this. They have to, have to see how to make, make this compost. And so the Africans, they weren't there very many of the day before, but they have a communal relationship with each other. And I said, tomorrow's an important day. So I was surprised that this many people showed up. They don't have cars. They ride bicycles and they walk from all their farm, but they have a excellent communication system because of the communal culture that they have, all these people showed up and they brought all the ingredients to make compost. So they're making it in buckets and everything else. And I sheltered them. I said, you make this up, chop everything up. They did. They had a compost making party. And I said, take it home, watch it change into the black soil in a matter of weeks, then test it on your own farm. You know, plant carrots on your own soil and test it in the compost. I want them to see the difference. Well, somebody from Zambia sent me a message about three months after this. And they said, Mr. Wayne, that's what they call me, please come back to Zambia. We're making a profit. And I went, yippee, because that's a big deal in what I have assignments with Farmer to Farmer. The lady down here on the, with the dark glasses is from Columbia. And uh, I was assigned this spring to go to Columbia and teach in schools. She's a 10th grader uh, high school teacher. And so, again, the students made the compost. And later she sent me, she said, we, we took that soil right on the school grounds and raised a garden. And that was uh, the lettuce that she, she raised there. Incidentally, in, the, in America, you get that kind of lettuce, and it's about 10 bucks a pound on a high end. It's a, it's a really high uh, commodity to, to be able to raise and sell. She's raising it for no money. 
The other picture that I have over here is actually from the Montana Rescue Mission. This helps people you know, get their lives straightened out and get them back on the road because they were homeless. So we said, let's try something in, in our community here. They get a wagon full of vegetables, and I said, hook it up to your bicycle and paddle around the streets and see if you can sell. And they did, and it was successful. But not only that, they said, Wayne, when we go around there, we teach people how to grow this food, and they're so interested. So it's like the quote was um, from somebody, we don't really sell this stuff. We're giving the information. But just think, instead of standing there with a cardboard sign asking for something, these guys have reversed it, and they're giving the information out. Here's another picture of another one of our compost evangelists that's teaching in, in uh, a school in Tanzania. His name is Gaston. 14 years ago, he was with us in Rwanda. My wife and I were there for um, three months. So we got to go from seed to stomach. And he was our interpreter. And so he told this lecture over and over and over again. And so I said, Gaston, you know, you could probably make a living doing this. And I said, <clears throat> back then, I said, you maybe have to change trade it for a chicken or something, because their economics are different than ours. But here he is, just sent me this photo from the school he is teaching in, and he has all this beautiful food. And he said, Wayne, this is your legacy to us. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. But what, what I'm really heading for is I, I actually need your help, because I am on a mission to wake up the world to regenerative agriculture, like I said before. I, I, I need your help to do this. But and in closing, I just want to say, you raise this kind of food, and it has the microorganism inside of it, and you eat it, you can change your health. Thank you.